Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Module 1. Uh, once again, I'm Justin Pritchard, um, and hopefully you've had some opportunities to uh, take a look at the uh, prefacatory material uh, in the Start um, Here page and also in um, the, the pre-reading and, and those videos. I've posted a couple of them. Um, one, Intro to the Course, which is a lot of nuts and bolts. Uh, two is a overview of, of the composition process, and it talks a lot about perspective. It talks about purpose. It talks about experience. It talks about like who we are as writers, who we are as readers. Um, and so now you are here. And so if you're watching this video, um, hopefully you have already posted in the thinking about process uh, assignment. And um, that's an assignment maybe some, seemed a little bit weird uh, for some of you. It was asking you to think about cleaning a messy room. It was asking you to think about uh, what is the process for cleaning a messy room? Um, what, is that, what does that look like for you? Have you done it before? And the, really the value of an activity like that is to begin thinking about how you can create, to put it maybe overly simply, how we can create order from what seems like chaos. Because when we think about that metaphor, right, when we think about a room, when we think about cleaning a room in particular, or cleaning a garage, or cleaning any space, um, it first looks disordered. But what's interesting about cleaning a space, especially one that you've, you've lived in, um, is that the, the space that you're cleaning, everything is there for a reason. If you're in your garage, right, like I've got a, I think about my own garage, right, and I, my own garage is in desperate need of, of some cleaning. Um, I've got like an old snow tire that I can't get rid of that's like shoved under my workbench. And I've got a bunch of Amazon boxes. I have uh, summer material that usually goes out of my patio. Um, I've got a bunch of like straps and tie downs for when I used to have a, a, a trailer that I would cart stuff back and forth. Like, so th there's all kinds of stuff. Um, that's in my garage, but it's all there for a reason. It's all related to garage things or or space issues. And so one of the things that we think about when we're writing, if we shift this metaphor, uh, because it badly needs to be shifted, but if we shift this metaphor and we begin thinking about, all right, so how does this relate to the process of communicating ideas? Whenever we are approaching an idea, whenever we're approaching a task in writing, we have a whole body of perspectives and evidence and research. We have our own bias that comes in uh, as we go into the situation. We have the existing perspectives that are there. Some of those perspectives are similar. Some have just been stored there or, or maybe are related to other things, right? And so the writing process begins with looking at what seems like a mess. It seems like an oversaturation of information, some of which needs to be there, some of which is useful, and some of which isn't. And so when we think about an essay, what we really are thinking about is we're thinking about creating an organizing system to store the ideas that are relevant and that advance the thing that we want our space to do. And in this case, our space is our idea. And so installing shelves, right, theming it, is the theming it is the thesis. What do you want your garage, if you're cleaning your garage, what do you want your garage to do? Do you want it to be available to park your car in? Um, do you want to create a workout space? Do you want to put chairs in there uh, with a screen, right? And make it like a, a, a three season room. Do you want it to be storage? Do you want it to serve like a mud room? Because even though a garage is a garage, right? And it's defined by the characteristics of it. It can serve a bunch of different purposes. In an essay, those purposes become your thesis statement. Like, what do you want your thesis to do? Yeah, it's an academic essay, right? But, but more than just an academic essay, it's uh, a space that you get to kind of define. And based on the way you define it, you determine what gets to stay there, what goes on the shelves, how big your shelves need to be, how many shelves you have, right? And how that space is gonna be utilized. And so right now we have the advantage of really just being able to think about this from an abstract standpoint. But when we start thinking about our units, 
And, you know, when I look at um, unit three, so in unit two, we're going to be talking about integrated reading, writing, we're going to talk about reading strategies and that kind of stuff. But when we look at unit three, we're going to be diving into content, and we're going to be writing an academic essay. This can seem really overwhelming, but I promise you that this process, um, as overwhelming as it can seem, is made much easier if you begin thinking about it in terms of purpose. If you begin thinking about it in terms of like, what is it that you want your essay to do? And that's done in your thesis. And we have a process to outline this. So I just wanna share. Of course, I can't share my screen without telling you I wanna share my screen. <laughs> All right, so when we're talking about the writing process, and you're gonna see this a bit in the reading later in this module, but when we're talking about the writing process, we're really talking about three stages. And I, I'm, the stages are not discrete. And we'll talk more about that in a second. But the pre-writing stage is all about exploration and uh, eventual invention. Right, so when we're pre-writing, we're reading, we're gathering information and ideas from a variety of sources. Maybe we're journaling on those sources, right? We think we're jotting down ideas or we're reflecting. Um, maybe we're doing a, a transcript, right? You can use, and I'm going to talk a little bit in our first unit of how we can use uh, Microsoft Teams or we can use uh, voice to text to give a transcript so that we can go off of it. Uh, maybe we're having conversations or we're engaging in a discussion board. So in this class, we're utilizing a discussion board. But there's also an opportunity to just like talk about the stuff you're reading, right? To get those ideas out there, to bounce them off people you know and trust. We synthesize ideas so we combine different perspectives, we combine different viewpoints um, and information. So we think about things that are similar, we think about ideas that are related, right? Um, and then there's invention. By the time we get, so after we read enough and after we talk enough and after we discuss enough and after we uh, synthesize enough, there's going to come a point where you say, hey, I really think that the most important aspect of this conversation is blank. And when you come to that understanding, when you do that, that's when you develop a thesis statement. And going back to my cleaning idea, right, my cleaning metaphor uh, that hopefully I'm, I'm not killing for anybody. But uh, when I go back to my cleaning metaphor, you know, the thesis creation, that's the point where you're like, I think based on my needs and based on how I'm using this space, that the most important thing for me to do in this room or in this garage or wherever is blank. For you, when you're looking at your academic essay, you're going to say, I think based on everything I've read, everything I've experienced, everything that I've, I've discussed, I think the most important aspect of this idea is whatever. And that is your provisional thesis. And so a lot of times, you know, I'll give students, um, I'll give students some, some assignments or I'll give them some guidance and, and they'll, they'll have to come up with a thesis statement. And they'll come to office hours or they'll talk to me after class or during class or whatever. Um, and they'll be like, I, I just don't know what to write. I don't know what my thesis is gonna be. And I'll say, well, what do you think about all the stuff we read? And they say, well, I don't know. And so at that point, what you don't know the, the thing that you don't know is what your thesis will be. But that if a lot of most of the time people think that they don't have enough ideas yet because they're not good at coming up with a thesis statement. But really, most frequently, the issue is that they just haven't experienced or read or discussed enough to be sure about what they need or want to say. Because it feels overwhelming. Like when I open my door to my garage, that feels overwhelming. It is not overwhelming because. Uh, I can't do it. It's overwhelming because I haven't really been thoughtful about purpose. That right now that 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 space is a catch all. And there's a lot going on and I haven't taken the time to think about. It. Now, once you have a purpose, that's when you begin to set a plan. That's what drafting is. So we move into stage two. And I'm going to get a marker here. Make me feel like I'm in class. <laughs> I just wrote it. Uh, that, that's when you move to stage two. Right. And so you move into stage two and you start to organize. So you outline, you, you create a rough sketch of what you think needs to go where, what topics do you need to address? How many shelves do you need is, is really what we're thinking about and what's gonna go on each of these shelves. You're gonna, gonna expand on this. You're gonna begin to look at supports in your reading. 
right, to figure out what you're going to stack in each of those paragraphs, in each of those shelves that you've set up in your space. You're going to connect those. You're going to make sure that they're themed around the thesis so that they make that, that space of the essay, they make that academic idea better. And so we're going to talk later as we move through, we're going to talk about paragraph structure and creation and organization. We're going to talk about drafting. We're going to talk about outlining. All of this stuff becomes much clearer later. But the purpose of the drafting stage is to organize content that you already have. And so when we're writing this whole, I'm pointing like you can see my hand, this whole first stage here, right? This whole idea, maybe I'll use the lady pointer. This whole idea here in pre-writing, that's giving you the content that you need to figure out how to organize in your drafting stage. And then the one that people most frequently leave out is moving. So once you have a draft, once you have a vague idea of, uh, or excuse me, a, a concrete idea of how you're going to present ideas, how you're going to use the space of the essay, right? How you're going to organize your garage, right? Then you're going to move into revision. And in your revision stage, when you're revising, you're thinking about how well did my organization and my focus, how well did it work? You know, you might look at, uh, in your revision stage, you might look and realize that you've really just piled ideas on top of one another. So to, to use my garage metaphor, you just shoved a bunch of stuff on the shelves and they're the right space for it, but you weren't really thoughtful, like they're not in bins. In a paragraph, you might've shoved everything in, but they're not organized into complete sentences and into complete thoughts. You don't have supports, maybe. You don't have the things that you need to make it as clear and as useful to your reader as you can. And that's what revision is. And so sometimes when you revise, it means going back into the pre-writing process. Sometimes it means going back into the drafting process. Sometimes when you're drafting, you realize you don't have enough information and you need to go back here. Sometimes you're uh, as you're drafting, right? You're revising points and then going back and drafting the next point. You're building as you go. But the interesting part is that all of these, and I'm ruining my graph here, and I'll erase it in a second for those of you that this is bothering. But um, for all of this, it's none of it's static. It's not unidirectional. It's not one directional. That you move back and forth through these different stages as you write as you think in order to create uh, an essay, in order to create a, a piece of writing that works. And so I would invite you, if you already submitted your, um, your thinking about uh, organization or thinking about process, excuse me, assignment, if you hadn't thought about it in this way, maybe go back and take a look, reread it. And if you wanna repost, um, I'm gonna take a look and, and assess the one that you completed last. So if you want to if you want to rethink maybe how you've looked at uh, designing after this, um, that's fine. And then certainly uh, as we move into um, our final assignment, if you have questions, um, if you have uh, thoughts or ideas, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, once again, office hours uh, in person or online work, just uh, coordinate with me so that we can find the time that works. Thank you all.